Hello, Mrs C back here. Um, I'm going to show you how to make something that I was inspired by, by a year seven student who while homeschooling has been doing lots of cooking and she sent in some wonderful photographs of her crumble. So today we're gonna to make a fruit crumble. Doesn't matter what fruit, um, see what's in your fruit bowl. I'm going to use some apples and some blueberries and some bits of dried fruit that I've got left up in my cupboard. Um, but any fruit, whatever you've got, whether it's tinned, frozen or fresh, will work well in a crumble. So first of all, I'm going to prepare two apples. OK, I've already got one done here that's diced. Um, it's up to you whether you leave the skin on or take the skin off. Today, I'm going to take the skin off, uh, just for texture reasons. The people that I'm making the crumble for perhaps prefer it softer. Um, but if you leave the skin on the apple, it will work just as well. And also you'll get lots of the vitamins still in that apple and you'll get lots of fiber from the skin. So first of all, we're going to use a peeler, okay? Be careful with the peeler because again, they are blades and we don't want you to cut yourself. And we're just going to get the peeler on the apple, making sure the blade is the right way and going to take the skin off. Now, I always try and test myself here to see if I can get the skin off in one go. It's quite difficult and you have to have your eyes on that peeler, remember, because of the blade. All right. And see if you can get that skin off without it breaking. No reason for doing this, just a bit of fun. Have a little competition for yourself. All right, and there we have the skin off the apple. Oh, I'm quite proud of that. Then we're going to do what we've done already on some of the videos, is we're going to use the bridge and we're going to cut the apple in half, create a nice flat surface, cut the apple in half again. So we have got four quarters. And then this is a bit of the tricky part. This is getting the core out. So this is where we've got the pips and we don't want those in our crumble. So we're going to hold the apple, either a claw or a bridge and at an angle, we're going to just take that core out. And again, you get a nice flat surface that you can put on your chopping board. Okay, like so. That one's a bit stubborn, okay, like so. And the final quarter, like that. Okay, I'm going to take that little bit of skin off with my knife very carefully. And then we're going to dice the apple. So bridge, go down the length of the apple, then turn your hand. This is all really good practice to get your claw and bridge perfected and we're going to get little cubes in there all right so think of your shapes having long strips and then we're going to cube it Ooh. and cube and with the final piece and the claw okay and that apple is going to join the one that I've already done. Okay, and there's my pieces of cubed apple. Okay, so I've put my cubed apple in these little dishes. Okay, sometimes when you've had yogurts or you've bought a nice little dessert from a shop, you get them in these little pots. Don't throw them away because they come in really useful. So I've managed to fill six of these little pots okay but if you're making it for a family you can just use one big dish doesn't matter what it is whether it's metal or glass this one's called pyrex but you can put your fruit in the bottom of your dish so as long as it can go in the oven 
Now I'm making these in little ones so that they can be frozen um, to eat at a later date so it doesn't get wasted. Also, these little ones are good for people who live on their own, perhaps. So if you're making it for someone that you know who lives on their own or a grandparent and you're going to leave it on their doorstep for them, OK, it's a good idea to make little individual ones so that they don't waste it. OK, to those um, apples, I'm going to put the bits of fruit that I've got left over in my fridge. I've got these lovely plump blueberries. And they give a really nice moistness to the fruit in the crumble because they're quite watery. But they also give a lovely colour as well. I have to hide these from Dexter, my dog, because he loves blueberries. So I am going to take two out because he has two a day. Okay, And I'm just going to pop those on the top of the apple mixture. Okay, and I'm just going to put those on all of them. So here is where your maths comes in again because you need to really estimate or you can estimate how much goes in each dish or if you want to be really really clever you could count the blueberries and put the same amount in each pot. All right just like that look. So we're going to put that fruit in there like so. I've also got some bits of dried fruit that we're knocking around. This was when I made the birch and muesli. Didn't get round to using all the little bits. So it's a good way of using up anything that's lying around your cupboard so it doesn't get wasted. Remember, especially at the moment, food, well, food is always very precious. But at, to, at the moment, food is even more precious so that we don't have to go out shopping all the time. OK, so that's the fruit prepared. So to make the crumble topping, we're going to use 100 grams of flour. This happens to be self-raising flour because I've got a little bit left in the, in the bag, but plain flour will work just as well. I think at the moment, any flour is like gold. So um, whichever flour you've got in the cupboard. In it goes. We're then going to put 50 grams of margarine or butter or whatever spread you've got in there and we're going to use our fingertips to use the rubbing in method. Now remember when we do the rubbing in method we want only our fingertips in there and we don't want the palms in there. What's that? Because it gets too hot and it melts the fat. Absolutely, well done, well remembered. So we're going to lift it up as we rub. And remember, we're not just rubbing the margarine, we're rubbing it with the flour. OK, so it's nice and light. Also, by using our fingertips, we get that precious air in there as well to give it a really light texture. OK, so we're just going to rub that in till it looks like breadcrumbs. I'm sure you've been helping out in the kitchen while we've been working from home. Well, I know you have because I've seen some wonderful photographs that you keep sending. So keep sending them in, all right? Because like the year seven that sent this recipe in, it helps me think of what the rest of you would like to cook as well. So that's really, really useful. So there we've got our lovely rubbed in margarine. To check whether it's all been rubbed in, hopefully you can remember we give the bowl a little shake and any bits of unrubbed margarine will come to the top. OK, and there we go. So that has been rubbed in. And what you can add now are some oats. Now, you might have some oats left if you um, had a go at the birch and muesli. So we've got 50 grams of oats and what that does, it gives it a different texture. It also gives it a bit more fibre and um, it just makes the crumble a little bit crunchier. All right, so we're going to add those oats to the crumble topping and give it a stir like so, making sure it's all combined really well. Okay, and then I've got just 25 grams of sugar. This is a bit of brown sugar because it was left again in a packet in the cupboard and I want to use it up. 
but white sugar will do just as well. The brown sugar gives it a little bit more of a nutty taste and a bit more of a caramel colour. So just 25 grams because with the fruit, um, the fruit is already sweet. So remember, we want to stay healthy. We don't want to have too much sugar. So just 25 grams will be enough to make that crumble topping nice and sweet. And we're just going to mix that in. Like so. Making sure it's all mixed in together. You could, if you wanted to, put some ground cinnamon on top of your fruit, again, to enhance the flavour if you like cinnamon. But uh, if not, we're just got our, we've got our pots here and we're just going to again uh, get a tablespoon, remember the 15 milliliter spoon, and we're just going to divide that, if you're using small pots, over the crumble. If you're using a big uh, container, a big tray, uh, tin, you can just pour it over. Now remember, we want it to stay crumbly. So at this point, it's quite tempting to pat it down really hard like you would a sandcastle. Oh, a sandcastle. It'd be nice to go to the beach, wouldn't it? But never mind. We're just going to pretend we're filling our buckets here. The sun's shining, so it's a bit like the beach today. Okay. And we're going to just cover all of that fruit. Now we want to cover the fruit so it doesn't all start bubbling out over the top. Although I quite like that. It gives it a really nice chewy fruity flavour. All right. And we're just going to carefully, if you can see, just make sure all of the fruit is covered. And there we have our little fruit crumbles and I'm going to put that into an oven at about 180 degrees uh, gas mark 6 for about 15 to 20 minutes. All we want to happen is the fruit underneath to soften and the crumble on top to go all golden and crunchy. All right so see you back in 15. Bye for now. So here we have our lovely baked crumbles fresh out of the oven. You could, if you listen really carefully, just hear to it sizzling because underneath of that crumble topping is the fruit and with that sugar, it's really, really hot. So be careful when they come out of the oven because everything is, is boiling. All right, so you can eat those hot, you can eat them cold, you can eat them as they are, you can eat them with yogurt, with custard, with cream, however you want to serve it. All right, so a lovely fruit crumble and thank you to the Year 7 who sent that in as an idea. Good choice. See you again soon. Remember, stay inside, keep those hands clean and bye for now.